Hey guys, in this tutorial, we're going to take a first-hand look at the brand new Google Assistant API. Now, if you're not familiar with what the new Google Assistant is, it was released back in October, along with the new line of products, the Google Pixel Phone and the new Google Home. What the Google Home is, is essentially a Alexa equivalent by Google. It allows the users to have a conversation with an AI in their home to control their devices or interact with the software that you write. So the new API was actually released just this month in December. So what better way to learn than make a simple hello world? To begin with, you're going to have to go to API.ai. This is basically ground zero for starting your assistant conversation software. I'll go ahead and let you create an account and then come on back. Once you've created your account and signed in, you'll be greeted with your API dashboard. To begin your project, you'll go ahead and click on Create Agent. Now, an agent represents what your software is. What is your software name? What are you going to do? In this case, I'm going to identify mine as your butler. I'm going to go ahead and give it a description that could be represented on the Play Store, such as use me to have a conversation about anything. So our hello world is just going to have a simple one line response about what you're about to talk about. So in here, we'll go ahead, go ahead and click save. And now our agents created for us. Now at the beginning, we have two intents already generated for us, a fallback intent and a welcome intent. What an intent basically is, is it's a mapped user action based off of their request. So what that can mean is checking a balance. So I can ask, hey, so-and-so, how check the balance of my checking account? Well, an intent would be an action that a user is trying to invoke, such as check their balance. In this case, the default welcome intent is automatically triggered when someone welcomes or starts your application by prompting for your agent. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of these canned responses and add something a little bit more personal for my Butler application. I'm going to go say, hello, I'm your Butler. How can I assist you today? Or more accurately, let's go ahead and say, what would you like to talk about? And we'll go ahead and click Save. Now we've gone ahead and updated our default welcome message. Now let's go ahead and take a look at an, what an intent is, or entities. Entities represent natural objects within language speech. So if a user is checking their bank account, they can say, let me check my checking account. Well, checking account would be a type of object. So you can have an a, a entity of accounts. And then in there, you can have object types of checking or savings. Or let's say you were providing recipes. A entity could be identified as basically just a natural object, such as tomatoes for ingredients or bananas, anything like that. Think that in terms of code, a entity is basically an object type, but in natural language. So here I'm going to create a entity and make sure that there's no white space. And I'm going to call my entity name conversation type because we're going to have an object type of what a user would like to converse about. And we can go ahead and add some default values that a user can have as far as interaction. Here I'm going to have a weather as a value within conversation type. And let's do news, can be a conversation type, sports, and let's go ahead and add religion. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, now alongside the default naming of your value type, such as sports, you can also add synonyms in case someone you doesn't always use the word sports if they wanna talk about that subject type. So here I can add football, let's say maybe soccer. So anytime let's, in our conversation, someone says, I'd like to talk about soccer, that triggers our agent to know, hey, let's talk about sports. So in this case, let's go ahead and click save. 
and now we can return and see a list of all of our entity types. In this case, we just have one. Now let's go ahead and create our first intent, which is basically going to be our first defined interaction between a user and our software. So go ahead and give your intent a name. Again, we're not having any white spaces. Let's go ahead and say conversation starter starter. And now we have to give a few examples of what a user might say within our application. So they might say, what's the weather like? Or what's new in news? Or what is going on in religion. Now that we've defined a few things of what a user might be able to say, we can go ahead and map an action type. Basically an action is a trigger on our business software that will respond to this intent. So in this case we're going to call it the same thing as the intent, so conversation starter. Let's go ahead and give a response to what our software will respond to when they start this intent. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say, all right, let's talk about conversation type. Now bringing this all together, we define the intent of what a user might say. We gave a few examples of what they might say to start this action. And the actual action is the defined name of what our business software will respond to on your web API backend. So when a user starts a conversation, what is going on in religion, our software can respond to this action name of conversation starter to generate appropriate response. In this case, in the text response, we're just simply going to return back a name of conversation type. But of course, if your response might return more accurate data, such as actually headlines, then you might um, add headlines in the response defined here. But we'll go cover that in future videos. Now that we've defined our first intent, we'll go ahead and click Save. We can actually try it out here. So we can say, what's new in the news? And we'll get a response. All right, let's talk about the news. So now that we have our first um, intent working, we can go ahead and actually deploy this to live production. So to, in order to do that, just simply go to fulfillment, sorry, integration, click on actions on Google. Let's go ahead and give this a name, actions on Google. Let's go ahead and give this a name this is the name that a user will prompt your Google Home for in order to actually use the software. So I'm going to say your butler. So when I ask Google to talk to your butler, it's going to trigger our software. We can actually add a default intent, which the predefined one's fine. We can choose a different voice type if you want a male or female. I'll leave it at the default male. Click authorize. Now this is actually gonna load your Google account and then authorize an API. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and click preview. Wait a moment. Now we can successfully test our first agent interaction. Now you can use the either the web console or you can actually use a, a test Google Home device that's associated to your Google account account. So let's go and see if it works now. All right, now that we've deployed our first agent to our Google Home, to test it, all we have to do is simply say, hey Google, let me talk to your butler. Sure, here's your butler. Hello, I'm your butler. What would you like to talk about? What is going on in religion? All right, let's talk about religion. What's new in news? All right, let's talk about news. There you guys go, your first Hello World video with your brand new Google Home. 
I hope this was informative, and if you guys have any comments or suggestions, feel free to private message me or leave a comment in the section below. Until then, see you guys next time.